southeast corner of the stadium. We're now entering the field with one of the many prides of Dartmouth, Dartmouth High School marching band major. It's Holligan and Shirley. and rifles supervised by Addison Caterley. Assisted by Samantha Hussey and Mila Cohen. Cheerleaders supervised by Rebecca Braga. Band led by student conductors Laura Sullivan, Erin Thatcher, and Lexi Aruda. Dartmouth High School is proud to present Dartmouth High School Marching Band. Robin Hood, fight, our boys will shine, and glory to Dartmouth.
I used to get my flu shot at work. Yeah. And yeah. every year I go out to the nurse yeah. to check out with John <laughs> and that <laughs> meat like I was having fun this night. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. Tonight, we honor our senior football student athletes, band members, and cheerleaders. We thank them for their dedication to these activities and wish them all the best in their future endeavors. Shanti Goncalves, parents, Olympia and Lionel. Madison Leonardo, parents Suzanne and David. <laughs> Chelsea Petty, parents Karen and Michael. <laughs> Abby Rogers. Father David and Sister Lily. Ariana Stevens, parents Sheila and Derek. Number three, Oliver Tardash, parents Julia and John. Number four, Captain Will Kelly, parents Pam and Jim. Number five, James Martin, parents Patricia and Jeff. Number eight, Captain Patrick Crane, parents Maya and Patrick. Number 13, Captain Baron Dutra, parents Jennifer and Jamie. Number 18, Will Chow, parents Jenny and Davis. Number 22, J.J. Esterlin, accompanied by his teammates and captains. <laughs> Number 34, Captain Ethan Marks, parents Kim and John. Number 50, Daniel Martin, parents Tracy and David. Number 52, Ben Pino, mom Jane. Number 55, Josh Miller, mom Jamie and grandfather Steve. Number 57, TJ Pickering, Mom Julie. Number 75, Parker Souza, parents Jess and Trevor. Number 84, Zach Sylvia, parents Elizabeth and Jeff. Our band seniors, Aiden Amaral, parents Patricia and Nelson. <laughs> Oliver Johnson, parents Nancy and Jeff. <laughs> 
Thea Hayes, parents Jen and Jim. Aiden Lemire, parents Ann and James. Austin Edgecombe, parents Laura and William. Sarah Taylor, parents Deborah and John. Ezra Shrudik, parents Nathaniel and Melinda. Carly Richards, parents Ken and Paula. Ryan Cleveland, mother Lori and brother Ethan. Abigail Cora Simmons, parents David and Sherry. <laughs> Ashley DeJesus, parents Kim and Bruce. <laughs> Brendan Mello, parents Rick and Wendy. Devon Fuentes, parents Carmen and Custodio. <laughs> Ashton Perry, parents Shannon and Chad. Gabrielle Piva, parents Linda and Desiree. Jada Walker, parents Lanny and Jess. <laughs> Joshua Moniz, parents Matthew and Andrea. <laughs> Kiera Alexis Perry, parents Kevin and Lynn. Frank Ace Crowell, grandparents, Nancy and Paul. <laughs> Genevieve Shadid, parents, Elizabeth and Wassman. <laughs> Gabriella Ruta. Parents, Sarah and Paul. <laughs> Olivia Jasmine, parents, Amy and Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, how about one more round of applause for our 2021 graduating cheerleaders, football players, and band members.
Right guard, senior, number 55, T.J. Pickering. At right tackle, number 75, senior, Parker Souza. At left guard, senior, number 52, Ben Pinu. At left tackle, number 62, junior, Chase Lackey. At quarterback, number four, senior, Captain Will Kelly. At running back, number 22, senior, J.J. Esterlin. At the other running back, number 34, senior, Captain Ethan Marks. At running back, number 18, senior, Will Chow. At wide receiver, number 13, senior, Captain Baron Dutra. And at the other wide receiver, number one, junior, Dylan Gomes. Just like to remind you, if you know have people at home that are trying to watch the game, we are live on YouTube. Led by Captains Will Kelly, Ethan Marks, Baron Dutcher, and Patrick Crane. Let's welcome to the field with pride our Adonis Indian football team. Officials for tonight's game, your referee is Rich Newman. Your head linesman is Mark Getchell. The line judge is Charlie Dacey. The back judge is Cameron Crawford. The umpire is Lou Pearlstein. And the clock operator is Bill Devine.
Captains are at midfield for the coin toss. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to this telecast of Dartmouth High School football. Tonight, a conference game. Bridgewater Raynham in town to take on the homestanding Dartmouth, Dartmouth High School and Indians. It's on the pregame show. It's senior night for all these youngsters on the field. Band members, cheerleaders, color guard, and of course the, the varsity uh, Bridgewater football players Rainham will as well. Andrew and Bridgewater Raynham goal. comes in this game with two straight wins. They started the season against four Titans. Duxbury, Zavarian, Bonstable, and St. John's Prep. 0-4. 2-0 in their last. A victory over New Bedford last week by a score of 28 to 6. They got some pretty good players. Absolutely. I mean, it's first year without Dan Buron. You have uh, Declan Byrne as the quarterback. We watched him pregame. He was slinging the ball 35, 40 yards, no problem on a seed. Darwin needs to be ready for that. You're going to see a lot of uh, spread tonight from Bridgewater and Rainham. Might see some uh, power eye mixed in. Old coach Dan Buron was a big power eye guy. Two tights. New regime here. They're going to switch it up on you. This kid Burns can throw it. Should be a good game for Darmouth. And, and their conference play, Bridgewater Ray Raynham is 2-0. Oh. Dartmouth is 1-1. One one. Biggest game of the year thus far for the Indians. Anthem. We'll get into more of that in just a moment. It's time now for the Dartmouth High School Marching Band. It's a national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn young person has quite a voice. You look on at the Dartmouth High School side of things here as we get set to call all the action live on YouTube as well as our frequent viewers via Channel 9 on Dartmouth Community Media. Channel 9 catches during the week now live via YouTube. Andrew, without question, the biggest game of the year. Bridgewater Raynham, like we said, slow start, two wins in the conference. But you made a good point pregame on the field. Dartmouth is in this weird division with all these Division One schools and they're a Division Three school. So when I mentioned it to you tonight, you said, man, no big deal if Dartmouth loses. Why is that? Well, the way the conference is set up, every team is different. They're Division Two, so Bridgewater is playing for a spot in Division Two in their ranking. Dartmouth, Division Three, they're playing for spots in their division. You beat division a division higher, you get more points, which is good for Dartmouth, who I think is currently 11 in the rankings. I think top eight make it. So this is a big game, but also, the last 10 years or so, the, the measuring stick for Dartmouth was always, can you get by Bridgewater Raynham? They've been the team to beat. They're always in the playoffs. They're always good. They're always well coached. So no matter what happens tonight, it's a measuring stick for Dartmouth going forward to see if they can hang with teams in their division going forward or or not. I mean, it's kind of put up or shut up for Dartmouth to see if, if uh, they can get this one here. Gone is Dan Buron. They're Connell Lynch in Bridgewater Raynham. New coach is Lou Pacheco. Short kick, far side. Fielded by the Indians, and the special teams will advance it up across the 25 to about the 26-yard line. We're making the special teams tackle was Demetrius Passasas. That was uh, Fennel. Chase Fennel returning that short kick. 
So the Indians will have it. First possession of the ball game. They're led by their outstanding quarterback, Will Kelly. 11 touchdowns on the season. And uh, Ethan Marks, 34. You folks at home and along the YouTube network. He's one of the few players in high school football that loves contact. Sure does. Here he is as the eye back. And he'll get the first carry of the ball game coming here to the near side. Bridgewater Raynham stretches it out. He inches his way up to the 30-yard line where he's met there by Bassam Audi. I don't think Dartmouth's going to do anything too crazy this first drive. They're going to stick to what they're used to and, you know, see what see what Bridgewater is doing on defense to try to get to the outside, get a corner, and, and let uh, Marks put his head down and get some yards. Second and six here for Kelly. Max in motion, and Kelly will keep it off the ball fake, a staple of the Indians' offense, and Kelly's out for a good gain, and he's very close to that first down he was looking for. He's going to be about a yard short. No, they're going to say he's got it. They're going to move the chain. Close, good call. I thought he had it originally, and then uh, one of the referees started to walk it back a yard or two, and... The head official corrected him and to give the Indians the first down. I'm Jim Thompson alongside Andrew Thompson. We welcome you to this telecast of Dartmouth High School Football. Brought to you by Dartmouth Community Media and live on YouTube. Opening moments in this one. Bridgewater Raynham 2-4 and four coming into this one. The Indians at 5-1. and one. But don't let Bridgewater Raynham's record uh, Cause you difference at all. There's a nine yard pickup by Marks. Yep. Tom is sticking to their bread and butter. Marks and, and Kelly, the read option. Nobody better around here than Kelly when it comes to the read option. He's very good at reading the linebackers and defensive end. No one to give it to his man Marks and no one to keep it. We saw last week uh, the fine folks at uh, Dartmouth Community Media on, uh, on the goal line. Kelly had a three yard run off that same ball fake we saw a couple of plays ago and we saw six linemen just staring at uh, the quarterback because they keyed on uh, number 34 and here's Kelly speaking of him and Kelly's out close to midfield where he'll pick up an Indian first down well, Kelly has great athleticism Andrew he struggles uh, with the passing game but that's, I think that's only become because he's, he's so athletic, his feet are moving, and when you have to pass the ball, you kind of have to plant yourself. Yeah, I mean, he's athletic. He likes to get out of the pocket. And I think sometimes he, he sees it and he just gets too, I want to say excited, but, you know, when, when it's time to throw, he doesn't set his feet. He's always on the move and doesn't take that time to really get that ball downfield. And there's a mix-up in the backfield, and that's going nowhere. Ethan Marks is going to lose three. So I think watching this play, there's a little bit of confusion whether to keep it or pull it. Obviously, there's you know nowhere to go either way, but it's one of those rare mix-ups you see between Kelly and Marks. Logan Johnson was in there quickly for Bridgewater Raynham. Second down and 12. Just under nine minutes to play here, opening quarter, here on senior night from the stadium. Esteline in motion. And he's going to lose big here. He tries to turn the corner and gets smacked out of bounds. At about the 46, 47 yard line. Did a lot of running, Andrew, but didn't pick up any yards. <laughs> a lot of running, and sooner or later you got to turn it off field. I mean, I know he wants to try to make a big play, but no, this offense is not geared to go backwards and sideways. You want to get upfield and keep that, you know, the defense off. Um, you know, off off their feet and, and not know where, which direction to go. And running side to side does not help Dartmouth. Third and 12 here is the rush, and they've got to throw a screen. And that's Mox with it. Mox has got a first down and more as he's down inside the 40 down at about the 34 yard line. That's a gain of 16 and a first down. And Bridgewater Raider, man, dude, they, they took the bait. That's what Dominic needs to do. They need to make the plays when they're supposed to. They, they've run this play a few times this year. It hasn't worked out. This time it was perfect. Kelly had enough time to get back, give Marks room. No one went downfield early, which had been a problem. Get it to your playmaker, Marks. Perfect first down play. First and 10 Indians. First possession of the ball game. 
And here's Marks running hard. And here comes a flag thrown down there at the 30 yard line. That's normally in duel you see a holding call. Unfortunately, uh, yep, and there it is, holding on Dartmouth. Holding against the Indians. The replay first down. Nolan DeAndre was on that tackle. Play it real slow, guys. Let's see if we can see it. <laughs> I don't know where, where they're throwing that or how we threw it, but hey. First down, Indians. Uber ride to go. Thank you, sir. Here's Ethan Marks and Marks wrapped the around the ankles after a gain of a couple. Getting him up the bottom of the pile is Aaron Pacier. Made the tackle for Bridgewater Arena. Aaron Percy on the tackle. Second down, we'll call it 13. Just under seven and a half minutes to go. First quarter. No score here from... Memorial Field. Or as I still call it, Andrew, the stadium. That's right. Can't forget those bets. Here's Kelly. Kelly looking, looking. He's going to throw long and deep, and he's going to throw it right into the teeth of the defense, and they're going to pick it off. And the ball is loose. That was number... Bridgewater Raynham returned it. I believe that was Demetrius Paseas. Yep, correct. And that's been a, a problem with uh, with quarterback Kelly. Rolling to your weak side and throwing across. He rolled out. He actually set his feet. But you're throwing... I mean, Dutrick tried his best to get back to the ball. Just an inaccurate pass. Three defenders there. Tough play for Dutra to get in. Unfortunately, he did fumble, but Dartmouth couldn't get it, so. So we'll get a chance to look at uh, one of the top quarterbacks in Eastern Massachusetts, Declan Byrne, being recruited heavily by a lot of Division three and two schools throughout the New England area. Pre-game, we saw this young fellow throw it 45, 50 yards like it was nothing. And he'll turn and hand it to his running back on first down, and that's Mike Rubo. Rubo's out for a gain of five. Rubo on the carry. Gain of five on the play. It will be second. And five. Ball is on the Bridgewater Arena 42 yard line. Burn. Hands it to the first man through. And that's a big fullback. Tomasi. Tomasi. Tomasi on the carry. We can just tell Burns has control of the offense. Now, Gets everybody to the line. Barks out some, some different formations, some different orders, and then nobody moves, nobody does anything. I mean, between Bjorn and the new coach here, I mean, they've always just been a well-run machine every year, year in and year out. I remember back when I was in high school, they played New Bedford, and it was the same thing. New Bedford was a team to beat. Bridgewater came in the playoffs, beat them. So that's almost 20 years now. Is the running back in there, Dawson DuBose, that time carried the football. And he picked up the first down. So Bridgewater ran him using DuBose, Rubo. DuBose on the carry, brings the ball out to the 40-yard line. Yeah, Dan Buron, uh, he was old school. He didn't put up with much gruff with parents, <laughs> his kids. He was one way, his way or no way, and he won consistently up at Bridgewater Raynham. You can ask the referees if it was his way or no way as well. I've seen it here a few times. He doesn't put up with anything. Here's the first pass of the ball game, and it's completed for a first down out to the 40, no, excuse me, on first down out to the 46-yard line. Be second down and four. The, I can remember before they put the new lights here, Andrew, I was walking off the field with Coach White, and Coach Buron comes running over, and he is incensed at the really smack that with around that night. I'll never play here. My team will never come here ever, ever again. 
you better fix this field or we're done. But he, he didn't want to say congratulations or anything else. He wanted to get his point across, and he did. And that's the kind of guy he was. Huh? Kind of guy you want to play for. Here's Rubo, the running, Rubo running back. Gary. He's still on his feet. He's down at the 45-yard line. And he picks up a Bridgewater Raynham first down. Run down by Parker. Susan brings the ball out to the Indian this is again just line. off tackle That's and get upfield. And down. first down, Bridgewater Raynham. Dartmouth needs to get off their blocks. They need to start, you know, getting in the gaps. That's what Dartmouth does. The linebackers, I know Crane is out tonight. It could be a problem for Dartmouth, but they got to stay home. they got to make sure they, they fill the gaps and, and make those plays. First and ten Trojans. There's a run to the left side, spinning his Rubo, and he spins his way down to the 40, where he picks up four yards. And on the tackle for the Indians was Baron Dutra. Second down and a long six to go. Large crowd here. Bridgewater Raynham crossed the way. Stands half full. They usually travel pretty well, and it's a beautiful night here in Dartmouth, Mass. for. High school football, temperatures hovering around 60 degrees. Clear skies. You can see the moon rising over the stands over there. Beautiful. And they give it to the first man through, and that's the big fella crashing his way. Amin Abasi, big fullback. And he picks up another Trojan first down. So each team has had a shot with the football. The Indians moved it pretty well until they turned it over via an interception in Bridgewater Raynham now with three minutes to go. This is their first possession. Off the turnover and started back around their own 20-yard line, and now they have it down inside the Dartmouth 35. I know Dartmouth, they, they know they have to play mistake-free football. In that first drive, they were playing great. They were moving the ball, holding. Now you've got to be second and 16 and second and 15. And they don't want to be in a position where Will Kelly has to sling the ball 30 yards downfield trying to make a play. They're much better second and five, second and six, third and fours. They can pick up those no problem. Um, and make that turnover. Now here comes Bridgewater and marching down the field. They, they can't get into this kind of ball game with Bridgewater Random. They're just too good, too smart. They don't make bad plays. Dharma just got to play mistake free and, and, and you know try to stop the run game. And, but the only end is you got to watch out for Burns with the pass. So they got to be on their toes in the secondary as well. I know Coach White usually stands down towards the end of the bench where he's coaching his guys on the on the defensive backside. I'm sure he's yelling at him, telling him to get back and you know watching what's going on and he's done that for years. Well Burns only thrown it once, completed it for a short gain. But they're running the ball successfully on the ground against this Indian defense, which has been staunch all season long to give up about only ten points a ball game. Burn, five-step drop. He's going to throw long, deep. He's got a man out there. It's caught for a touchdown. Into the hands of Ryan Brihenny. And he was behind the Indian secondary at Andrew. We talked about a pregame. This kid's a Division three, Division two quarterback. Let's look where this ball lands. Perfect. Sets his feet. Right on the money. Had defender beat. And I think Bridgewater, I'm just waiting, waiting, waiting the drive. I have seven runs, uh, oh, six runs and one pass before that 38-yard touchdown pass. Right down the field they go. This is why Dominic needs to play mistake-free. They can't afford to fall asleep in the secondary, let plays go. I mean, they got to be ready for everything. And, and that looked effortless for 38 yards on a dime. You don't yep. see that much in high school football around here. Yeah, and the uh, touchdown maker, Brihenny, ran past Dylan Gomes just – Right off the line of scrimmage, sprinting down the far sideline. And that ball was just perfectly placed. Good defense by uh, Gomes. He's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. But, uh, you know, if you run the ball successfully, and then the play action works, kind of freezes the linebackers and um, has those secondary players looking in. And that's all you want them to do. Those corners, whatever, look for the run first. And then the wideout just, he gets an advantage, a step, half a step, and he's by you. And... Perhaps that's what happened there. And it's tough in high school. I mean, you play some of the teams like Durfee and other schools. They don't throw the ball that much. You get a team like Bridgewater, who can throw it. All of a sudden, you get your defensive backs, eyes are in the backfield, watching play action. 
and you get toasted. Well, Mason Berry didn't waste long. We saw him pregame. He was booting them from 40 to 45 yards out. So Bridgewater Radom comes into town. They take the first possession off an Indian turnover. Much talked about by Andrew. They lead with 2.45 to go in the opening quarter by a score of 7 to nothing. That scoring drive, Andrew. That was an eight-play, 72-yard drive by the Bridge, uh, Bridgewater Radom Trojans. I had them for two passes, both complete and uh, six runs. So they lulled you to sleep. They gave you a little show around mid midfield with the pass. Run, 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 fullback then come at you with a 38-yard bomb. Nothing you can do if you're dumped on that. Were you one of those guys one, once upon a time? Sure was, a long time ago. Congratulations to the uh, departing seniors here on senior night. Of course, a lot of football left, playoffs still ahead. Of course, uh, the traditional rival game we'll have against Fairhaven. Thanksgiving morning. Plenty of football left and plenty of football left in this game. 2.45 to go in the opening quarter. Bridgewater Raynham scores first. Short kick picked up by Estelin, and he's looking for running room. If he gets the corner, he may have a shot at this. Estelin along the far sideline, still on his feet, slides out of bounds, just short of the 35-yard line. Yeah, Estelin made something out of nothing there. Got a nice pickup block by Jalen Adams, number 17, to break that around the corner. Did a nice job of not clipping there. I was watching that. Got his head around. Didn't do anything silly, which would cost him a penalty. Good block. Set up a nice return for Estelin. So they'll spot the football at the 32, first and 10 Indians trailing by a touchdown. Will Kelly at quarterback for the Indians. Marks. Marks on a carry. Right up the middle. Gets out to the 35 yard line. Tackled by the interior defense of Bridgewater. Give him a gain of two, second and long here for Kelly. Of two on the play will be second and eight. Ball is on the 35-yard line of the Indians. High snap. Here's Marks. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, those are the things that screw up the the timing and the and the rhythm of this offense. Logan Johnson on the tackle. Are you folks at home and watching this live on YouTube? Doc Noon's longtime public address announcer here at, at the stadium. He's now directing traffic from the booth. Third down for the Indians. Oh, Bridgewater rain him offside. Offside. And here comes the flags and the whistles. Bridgewater Raynham commits the penalty. That'll move the five down marker penalty. up five yards. Third and a short two. A huge for Darmouth. That gets him in there. Regular play calling, not third and eight, third and six. Now you can roll what you want. Coach Ross, you can call what he needs to call. Hopefully he picked up this first down. And here's the quarterback, Kelly. Kelly. And he's going to be very close to that first down marker. Miles Beckett came through the line of scrimmage like a madman. They made a great play on Kelly, just keen on the quarterback. Didn't go for the fake and made a nice play behind the line of scrimmage. So they'll give him no gain on the play. Coach White's going to go for it. We see across the way the down marker. They're going to get to that big orange stick over there and get the first. It's a whole new coaching staff over there for Bridgewater Raynham as well. High snap, marks, barrels in, and I'm watching that official up top there. It's going to be very close. I'm not so sure he got it. Oh, the head official says he's got it. That was close. See those coaches on the Bridgewater Random side, like saying, where well, the side judges, it didn't look like a first down, but they gave it to him. Another high snap, which throws off the timing. I don't. <laughs> I'm not even close. <laughs> This is when you miss Dan Buran. He'd be out at the hash oh, yeah, midfield, yeah. screaming his head off. Some entertainment. These guys are a little bit different. I'm sure they're upset, but there's no Dan Buran out there. 
Ricky's going to let the clock run out. It does. And we're through the first quarter here at the stadium. A score at the end of one. Bridgewater Raynham, seven. Dartmouth High School, nothing. Entertaining game so far. You talked about it. If the Indians play good teams, they can't turn it over. They turn it over, it leads to a touchdown. Correct. And unfortunately, it's the turnover was their, their main guy, Kelly. He wants to make a play. He's been their playmaker all year. I understand he wants to make a big play in senior night, wants to beat Bridgewater, but you've got to take care of the ball. You're driving. You've got to score the first series of the game. You can't let Bridgewater and him get out because, unfortunately, I think Bridgewater and him is going to outgun you if you need to get to one of these games. Bridgewater and him can throw it, as we just saw in that first drive. Just kind of anything they wanted, they got. They had no real negative plays in the first drive. Burns can throw it all over the field. You, you can't get into these games. You've got to score and you've got to be smart. Yeah, you you want to you want to just keep feeding it to uh, Ethan Marks and just try to wear down Bridgewater Raynham, uh, their defensive front. But more importantly, you want to possess the football. Correct. And, and when you watch the Dartmouth game this year, the, the, the passing plays that have been big for them are run to Marks, run to Marks, run to Marks, spring a little over the middle screen or, or the pull back out of the backfield, Crane comes out, slips up the seam for a touchdown. Those are the plays you need to do. You can't come out and try to throw it all over the field if you're Dartmouth. And for all you rom romantic people out there, it's not a beautiful Halloween move. Snuggle up to your sweetie on the couch and enjoy the rest of the game. Is the ball fake. Kelly looking for running room and gets out to the 44-yard line. Short game. Rubo in on the stop. See if Dahmer throws the ball here. It's, it's five runs in a row. Oh, spread. Is Kelly rolls right, being chased, throws sideline, and they have a completion along the far sideline. It's Byron Dutra, nice reception yep. through the little window there in the zone. Senior celebrating here tonight with his family. They're gonna say now he didn't catch it. And you hear the Indian coaches upstairs saying the guy on the sideline called it a completed pass. And it has been overturned, and Coach White is out there. Coach Madden as well. Here's Coach White. Well, let's look on. Let's see if we can see it, Andrew. Slow it down, boys. So there's Dutra at the, right at the 50. Looks complete to me, unless it's, I mean, a little blurry there, but I can't really tell. But it looked like he had enough room to get his feet down. Well, in case you were tuning in two or three weeks ago against the Poniquit, one of these things happened on a punt, and it was a holding call. And Doc Nunes and I have been sitting in this press box for years. We've never seen a nine-minute discussion by referees. So let's not, let's hope that this will not happen again as Ricky has his team around him and you can see he's just frustrated. And the officials are getting back in position. And there's your head guy right there. Third down eight now for the Indians. Here's the rush. Kelly trips. Now gets away. He's Kelly's hit on the near side. He's got running room. He's inside Bridgewater Raynham territory and is going to step across the sideline at the 28 yard line. Total athleticism by Kelly, and this is what he's good at, improvising. Absolutely. This is, I mean, if you're going to have a broken play, this is what you want if you're Dartmouth. Everybody was going to the opposite side of the field. Kelly luckily stayed on his feet, broke it to the near side. Nobody was over here. Everybody was on the opposite side of the field. If you've got a play to bust, that's Kelly for you. Everybody going to the far side. He actually rolled out to the far side, able to keep his feet somehow. Got a nice block here. Nobody down there. 
Nice run. Here's Kelly. Kelly on the carry. Cracks down to the 25 yard line. Nathan Cafagna with the stop. Give Kelly again a three. See the running clock. 10.45 to go in the opening half. Bridgewater Raynham in town have has the lead. They're winners of two straight. This is fine if you're down with ball control. Keep it out of Bridgewater Raynham's hand. But you got to score. Can't have a mistake. Here's Esterlin looking for room. Esterlin far sideline. Cracks down inside the 20. And he's close to the first down. It should have it. Esselin follows block and marks. It's a good guy to follow. Gets a block on the outside. Able to pick up the first down. Ran hard. Got upfield that time instead of sideline to sideline like last time. He's got the speed. He's got the power. Just got to get him going. Got to square those shoulders. Coach Rossi used to tell me that in our old days at UMass Tamath. Here's Kelly. It's wide open. Throwing. End zone. Caught. Touchdown. Into the hands of Dylan Gomes, the junior. And we got ourselves a ball game here at the stadium. Nice fake by Kelly. Gomes was wide open from the jump. Dartmouth does what Bridgewater aimed to do. Lull you to sleep with some runs, runs, runs. Catch defensive backs looking in the backfield. Gomes slips by for a nice touchdown. Good play. Good drive by Dartmouth. Demetrius Pasias was the defender. Teradash, high end over end. Looked like the Goodyear blimp coming in for a landing. And we're tied with 10-0-3 to go. In the second quarter, the Indians storm back with a score of their own. And now we're tied here at seven as the band plays on. What do you get for us, Andrew? That was a 10-play drive by Dharma, 68-yard, capped off by the 18-yard pass from Kelly to Gomes. Nice drive, good comeback for Dartmouth. Hopefully the defense can make a stand, but if you're Dartmouth, that's what you need to do all game long. You need to keep the ball out of their hands of, of Burns. Can't give up big plays coming back on defense. Get the ball back, control the ball, score. I know you're newly engaged, but you know, if, if Nicky were here and he had a nice full moon, he'd okay. still be doing the game, I know. Typical guy. <laughs> <laughs> You folks at home, I can talk like that because that's my son I'm talking to. Oh, the Indians kick it away high, end over end. Middle field. Bridgewater Raynham on the return. And a solid return. By Marvel. Well, that's not good. Ethan Marks is grabbing his elbow or shoulder or something. And there you see Marks there, number 34. This kid loves contact. I've done hundreds of games here and on the road over the last 25 years. It's been great players here. A lot of great ones. Not many like this kid who likes to hit. Perhaps a lot of better running backs. When it comes to physicality, He's one of the top top players that I can uh, recall for sure. Runs very hard. That's what I was trying to say. You just made it sound easy. <laughs> Indians chasing, still chasing. And they finally get Rubo down to the ground as he crossed the 30 out to the 31 yard line. Nice play there by number nine for Dr. Uh, JT Charia kept the leverage, didn't let him get upfield. Nice play. Bridgewater Raynham is one of the few schools that still have the quarterback under the center. Most teams are in shotgun. But this gives him the ability for play action pass as he fumbles the football. The Indians seem to be in there. And they got it. William Chow. 
Will Chow in there for the Indians on the recovery. So Bridgewater ran him. Does the Indians a favor? They turn it over. Let's see if the Indians can yeah, right from the make jump. do with it. Right from the jump, never got to his hands. Good play. Chow getting in there right away. Nice play, good for him. I believe he's a senior on senior night. Oh, nice play, Will Chow on senior night. Good for him. So the Indians, an opportunity here to take the lead. The ball just inside the Trojan 30-yard line. Last possession, the Indians had it. Took it in for the touchdown. Marx, he's going to throw open. it. Long, deep, he's got a man wide open, and it's incomplete. Baron Dutra, the senior, wide open in the end zone, and Marx just overshot him. Good call after a turnover for Dartmouth. I like the play call. Marks can throw it. He's the guy who came in a couple weeks ago through the Hail Mary pass, just out of the reach of Byron Ducha. I like the aggressive play call. You know, get the turnover and try to score. He was open. And here he is now done doing what he does best, barreling out for a big game. He's going to bring up third down and three to go Ball is on the for the Indians, for sure, in two-down territory. 23-yard line of the Trojans. It will be third and four. Kelly hands it off. To Baron Dutra, who came in motion, and Bridgewater Raynham snuffed that out. Logan Johnson from his defensive end spot. So William Chow's on the bench. It looks like Dutra came in to fill his spot. Unfortunately, Dutra doesn't get a lot of time in that slot position, but Chow usually plays. Tough to make that play call. Tough loss for the couple for a dump. Well, they lost a few in that. Now they're looking at fourth and long. About seven to go. Trying to capitalize off the Bridgewater Raynham. Turnover, Bridgewater Raynham now has stuffed the Indians into a position where it's going to be fourth down and long. We welcome you viewers on YouTube. And of course, uh, Dartmouth Community Media Channel 9. Always good to have you find folks along. Andrew Thompson sitting alongside. Doc Noons, public address announcer. Also the uh, band leader, Andrew, did you know that? Well-known well known band leader. You know, I don't know why they hired new band leaders because he's really, you know, the face of the band, you know. But um, listen, my dog hates the band at night because we can hear the drums from about eight miles away and you think someone's banging on the door <laughs> and they practice till about nine o'clock at night and you can hear it. I'm ready for game day by Wednesday. I can hear the... Yeah, so we're going to have to tell Doc <laughs> Noons that we need different sheathing on the drums. Right. So the dog's ear is in within a two-mile <laughs> radius. And Doc, he's on the school committee, Andrew. He controls the budget over there. I'm sure he can get different. I don't know. What do, what do they call that thing on top of the drums? What's that made out of, Doc? What's the the thing you hit the drums? What's, what? The no, no. The, the thing, the, the white part of the drum. What do you call that? The she? she yeah. Drum, he drum heads. How stupid of me. <laughs> you should have known that. <laughs> he didn't even know it. He just made it up. Dartman spreads him out too wide to the top of your screen. Kelly in the shotgun. High snap once again. Here comes the rush from the side. Kelly throws incomplete. And Bridgewater Raynham will take it over on downs. Uh, nice play by Miles Beckett there, chasing down Kelly, making him rush the throw. Bridgewater Raynham will take over. It looks like Dutra was open if he had the time to throw it, but Miles Bickett just kept him going north, uh, east and west instead of north and south and just threw it a little behind him. Tough play. It's too bad Dominic couldn't make anything from that turnover. So we're still tied at 7, 7.49 to go here in the second. Beautiful night here for football. Senior night. Big crowd on hand. Good to see I know we're still in COVID, but uh, it's great to see uh, people in Dartmouth coming out and enjoying a good high school football game. There's a little misdirection play, and the Indians snuff it out well. Parker Souza 
was there uh, along with Wilson, Devon Wilson for the Indians. Shot gain of one here on second down. Good job by those guys up front. They don't run the counter that much. There was a counter there for Bridgewater Rainham. Got to stay home on that. Dartmouth, Dartmouth uh, did a nice job on the line to stay home and not get tricked by that counter. Burn turns, pitches it. Indians have it well defensed. And it's going to be a loss. Whistles blow as the ball carrier still on his feet. That was Daniel Francis who was wrapped up in the backfield. This play looked like it was going nowhere fast. Right off the pitch, it's a deep pitch. Dartmouth got some penetration back there. Nice play. Byron Dutra got up back there and, and kind of busted that play up right away. Looks like a loss of almost 10. Almost 10. Third and 20 up on the scoreboard. And this is where their quarterback is dangerous. Declan Byrne. He's got it. And the Indians have him. Indians secondary did a wonderful job. Devin Wilson. Devon Wilson came through for the Indians. We'll look on. Devon Wilson on the tackle. Watching downfield. Everybody was covered. Nice job by Dom in the secondary. Devon Wilson just getting off his block and making a play on Burns. It will be fourth and 17 for Bridgewater Reno. Coach Zexter will be happy with his linebackers there. Good snap. Here comes the rush. Just gets it away, and it's a short kick. Gets a good Bridgewater rain and bounce there at the 46-yard line. He'll down it across the way, and the Indians will have it. Down on, on downs. The Clock is stopped here at the stadium. Five minutes and 37 seconds. You're watching Dartmouth High School. Indian football, Bridgewater Raynham in town tonight. This is a conference game. Bridgewater Raynham 2 0 in the conference. Dartmouth High School 1 and 1. But as Andrew had mentioned earlier, these are the teams you have to beat. Dartmouth will play in Division 3 in this crazy format that the state of Massachusetts has, the MIAA. And I think Bridgewater Raynham will play in Division 2. Am correct. I correct on that? That's correct. Even though they're in the same conference. So a lot of you former athletes that played back in the 70s and 80s, and you're wondering, geez, what happens if I just win my, my division? Don't I go to the Super Bowl? Well, those days are long gone. Everybody's got to get a trophy nowadays. So a lot of the uh, teams that finish 7th, 8th, they throw you in the tournament. Here's Kelly. Oh. Kelly looks near side. It's deflected. And it is incomplete. Almost intercepted there by Nathan Leach of Bridgewater Raynham. He had the opportunity. It was like catching an end over end punt, and you're holding your hands. Go ahead. Looks like Dylan Gomes had another touchdown, if you can see in this replay. He was wide open. Kelly saw him. He was going for him. He had about five yards of separation between he and the defender. That play was open. It's too bad. Second and ten now for Dammoth High School. Tied at seven. Clock stop, 5.31 to go before the band comes marching in. Here's Kelly off the ball fake and Bridgewater Raynham. I'm sure worked on that all week. Mike Rubio was there immediately for Bridgewater Raynham. I think Bridgewater Raynham practiced all week long of stopping Kelly in the run. And they seem like they're very disciplined up front. They're not letting anything get too out of hand when they go up the middle and, and on their read options. Not a surprise for Bridgewater and team, though. Third and nine here for the Indians. Combs comes here to the near side. As the whiteout. Kelly rolls near side. Here comes the rush. Look out, Will. They finally bring him down at the 35-yard line. Amen Abis. Abisi, excuse me, makes the tackle, and that's a big loss. The Indians will have to punt the football away. So Abisi's on the end. He's getting, does what he's supposed to, get the contain, keep him in the uh, leverage there. Nice play by Abisi. It'll be 
Zach Victor back there along with Daniel Francis. Good snap. Good punt. And the Indians are right there to defend it at the 35-yard line. Where Bridgewater will have it. Francis was on the reception. Chase Fenno on special teams. We talked about Fenno last week. Young player here for the Indians. And young Adams as well. Future of Indian football will be in those two kids' hands along with their 55 other teammates they'll have alongside. First and 10, Bridgewater Rain, and we're still tied at seven. And they give it to their running back, Mike Rubo. Rubo on the carry. Rubo. Perhaps three. Marks in on the tackle. I think JT Charter's done a pretty nice job filling in for Crane this week. This goes to show the depth of this Dartmouth team. Junior, so he'll be around next year. Good to get some playing time for him. Pern hands it to the first man through and interior that. Indian defense, no gain on that. Getting him up on the bottom of the pile for the Indians was big number 57, T.J. Pickering. T.J. Pickering on a tackle. Third down and six yards to go. You surprised that uh, Declan Burns been really quiet in this one, Andrew? I am, I, but at the same time, I, I think sooner or later it's coming. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm thinking is sooner or later Burns is going to start whipping around the field and it's going to catch Dartmouth off uh, on their heels. Well, Here here's we go. the play action. Burn throws. And he said it's picked off. Marks. That's Ethan Marks with the interception out here close to midfield. So we talked about Burn accuracy. Not this particular time. Looked to me like he forced his throw a little bit. He had another one of his uh, wide receivers coming deeper across the middle that had a step. I think he forced it in that play. Great play by Marks in front of the ball. The and let's give credit to Will Chow, who is right in the face of the Bridgewater Random quarterback, Declan Byrne. So he's in on the turnover as well. First and 10 Indians. And before they get this off, we have a timeout called across the way by their new head coach, Lou Pacheco. And boy, does he have a uh, big shoes to fill. You know, we talked about uh, Dan Buron, who was basically the Colin Lynch of Bridgewater Arena. Year after year, Super Bowls, conference championships, uh, played the game hard, played by the rules, but you were going to play hard for him or you weren't going to play. And I think one of the hardest things in football is, and it happened when you were at Dartmouth High, the legendary Colin Lynch retires to give the job to Coach McDermott. And if I was Coach McDermott, I would have said no. You don't want to be the next guy. And as a nice a guy as Coach McDermott is, he was not going to have the success Coach Lynch, Coach Lynch had. And, and it's hard, too, because you got, like, Coach Lynch, Dan Buren, they run this same style of offense. Ram it down your throw, hard nose, hard nose. 20 years later, you get this guy Pacheco in. Everything is spread. Everything's you know read option. It's totally different. He's got a whole different brand of football to play. It's 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 not easy. Miss Kelly and here comes the rush. He throws, and Marks came down with it. Yes, he did down at the 38 yard line and an Indian first down. He took a shot though, and Marks is down. And one of the assistants from Bridgewater ran him quickly over to attend to Marks. I threw it right into traffic. And a solid shot there by the secondary player, Ryan Brahini. Oh, 
hopefully it's just the wind knocked at him or something. I mean, hopefully there's nothing serious. But I mean, I don't, I don't think it was an intentional play. You know, I know some parents you can hear them hooting and hollering. But I, high school football is bang bang. I mean, these kids I don't think intentionally try to do anything to each other. A lot of these kids actually know each other from spring ball and flag football and basketball. You know, it's just a tough play and unfortunate to see a guy like Marks down. But hopefully it's just win knocked out and and uh, he can get back in the game. Well, somebody from Bridgewater Raynham ran out on the field immediately. I think it was a trainer. Yeah. And I uh, see the concern of a couple of the Bridgewater coaches over there as well as Mark seems to be getting up. And Coach White now making his way out to attend to his star running back. And we talk about Marks. He loves contact, but he loves to give it. And that time, it's a nice spot pass over the defenders' heads, but uh, left Marks vulnerable in the rib area. And um, he's coming over here to the near side. Yeah, you never like to see anybody get hurt, but I guess on the bright side is he didn't take a head shot. It, no, no, neither one of these guys are holding their heads or anything like that. So looks like he's... Not in too much pain walking off the field, but I think it's a little bit of a, I can't breathe. So Marx will come here to the near sideline and will keep a good eye on him. First and 10 for the Indians on the Bridgewater Arena 38 yard line. First and 10 Indians, Estelin will fill in for Marks. And here's Kelly. And Kelly is going to be dumped. Aman Abisi, once again. He's been a beast in this one for Bridgewater Raynham on the defensive side. He's having a good game. It's Abisi and Chow both having good games for Dominic and Bridgewater Raynham. Again, Bridgewater Raynham just holds their gaps. They don't do anything too crazy. They're not shooting gaps. They're not getting upfield. They're staying home. Not letting Kelly... Kill him on the ground. Marx is telling the trainer, showing her, showing her that it seems to be his ribs. And here's Kelly off the ball fake, and that's going nowhere. In the immediately, Logan Johnson, big number 87. And this whole offense, as we look on at the replay, Andrew, is built around Marx. All the play fakes, everything is around the star running back for, for the Indians. Right. And since he's been out, it's been a little discombobulated, and Bridgewater Raynham knows it. Right. And in that play, that, you know, that kid came, he was in the backfield immediately. Whether Marks was in the game or not, unfortunately, that was going nowhere fast. Clock running, approaching the 42nd mark. Third down and a country mile to go here for the Indians, and his Estelin looking for running room, and no way he's going to be dropped for a loss, Mike Rubo. Not only can he run the football on the offensive side, but a good linebacker as well, and that's going to bring up a fourth down for the Indians. Rubo doing a nice job getting outside, getting off the block of Chow, making the play. Good, strong tackle there. I think Bridgewater, does, they're not going to let you get outside on them. And, the, you know, the coaching, there's Marks on the sideline. Good news is he has his helmet. If he had a head injury, I don't think they're going to let him hold his helmet and, and be ready to come back he, in the He game. was holding his left side, like in the rib area. Mm -hmm. Folks at home, I'm not a doctor, so we never like to guess what it is. We just uh, wish the best for the young man. And his head, head coach there, Rick White, does as well. But with marks out, the Indians went completely backwards. And it looks like Dutra... <laughs> working on his long snaps. I think Marks is the long snap for a punt, which is going to be a problem if they have to punt here. Zach Victor will stand back at his 15-yard line to receive the punt. Yeah, going in there is Baron Dutra to snap it for the Indians. Afraid is to kick it away. Uh -oh. uh, one hopper back is the rush. Does a great <laughs> nice job, job getting it away. 
And it's a one hopper. And running with it, the far sideline is Will Kelly. And, and the coaching somebody staff got, upstairs. Somebody got leveled. And the coaches are saying that was an illegal hit by someone from Bridgewater Raynham. And getting up slowly and coming off the field for the Indians is JT Charrier. Let's see if we can catch that, fellas, in slow motion. Great job by the punter. Somebody eats on the top of your screen. Slow it down, guys. Uh, it's too close. Can't see where it is. Oh, oh right, there. right there. Oh, goodness. How could they uh, miss it? Uh, the biggest kid on the field, number seven. What a cheap shot. And Bridgewater Raynham runs it on a first down. you got to be kidding me. The Indian coaches are ready to jump out the window upstairs. And great job, guys, in the truck. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, if you're, uh, you're a tough guy, we don't even have him on the roster 75 for Bridgewater Raynham, but whoever he is. I think it was number 70, Christian that, Gibson. Well, good for him. He got, uh, got his name uh, on TV. And good for him. And we're at the half. There's young Marks. Well, it's an unfortunate way to end the half with a, with a play like that. It's been a great first half. Well, well uh, here's what I want you folks to do now. I want you to go to your refrigerator. You got like a two or three minute break here because the Indians have more equipment than the U.S. military does. They bring out these xylophones, flags. They bring out all this stuff. But it's great. The setup takes too, a little too long for me. But the performance, as good as any band, high school band, in New England, if not the country. So get a cold drink, maybe a cup of coffee, grab your loved ones, don't leave your TV screen. This is one of the greatest high school shows you'll see. Hats off to the youngsters of the Dartmouth High School Marching Band. Andrew and I will be right back with all the second half action after the halftime show. Sit.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Dartmouth High School Marching Band will perform their 2021 production, Fawns and Petals.
Ladies and gentlemen of the Dartmouth High School Marching Band in Kalagai. I'm John Loons, your announcer, and on behalf of the Dartmouth High School football team and band members, we do appreciate you being here this evening. Well, if that didn't get you uh, off the couch and give that band a standing ovation, I don't know what will motivate you people in Dartmouth and you people live on the YouTube network. This is one of the uh, greatest bands in New England, and uh, these kids work and just as hard as all the athletes do in all the sports here at the high school. And tonight is a special night, senior night. They are the uh, Dartmouth High School football players who are being celebrated for their senior season. Bad news for the Indians. Coaches just came up and told you what? I think Ethan Marks is going to be done for the night. Uh, not sure exactly he took that hit close to the end of the second half, going over the middle. So he will not be coming back tonight, which is going to put a real stressor on the Dartmouth offense going forward. And defense, I mean, he does play great defense as well. So going to have to find something in the second half, whether it's um, Estelin to, to fill that spot or... Somebody else to come in, Chow. Somebody needs to fill that vo that void in the Dartmouth offense. It's a big loss for Dartmouth after they played a great first half against the Bridgewater Random team. And if you're a defensive coordinator, and we've seen it all season, Will Kelly, his whole offensive scheme is off of marks because yeah. you're coaching against Dartmouth. You say, stop 34 and hope hope the quarterback doesn't kill us. But you've got to stop 34 because if he's running six, seven, eight yards per carry like he normally does, that play action, you know, jet sweep, everything comes into play. Now if you're the coordinator for, for Bridgewater Random, you're saying, he's out. Now we just stop Kelly, let him get one or two, three yards, who's ever in there. It's going to be less experience. And you noted, Mox plays on the defensive side of the football. He had an interception here tonight and almost threw a touchdown pass uh, off a trick play. Correct. But you do have first half uh, stats over there. I do. So Dartmouth had five offensive series in the first half. One scoring touchdown drive of uh, 10 plays, 68 yards. That capped off a uh, Kelly to Gomes 18-yard touchdown pass. Uh, Bridgewater Raynham also uh, with one touchdown drive of uh, 8 plays, 72 yards, capped off by a 38-yard uh, dime of a throw from Burns to 
Brahini, uh, which ties the game up at 7-7. Seven, seven. Both teams kind of struggled back and forth the rest of the half going four and out. And, and that was the two longest drives they had from both teams. Both came up with scoring drives. So Dunbar needs to keep their Ladies momentum on offense, doing what they're supposed to do. Again, it's going to be a tough fill without marks, but hopefully they have something else in the in the play calling where they can come up with a scoring drive, and hopefully Kelly's got some magic left in him. And, you know, you, you do a lot of study before the game, and you, you kind of go on the Internet and try to do the best you can on, on scouting a team. But Bridgewater Random, Declan Byrne, highly recruited Division Two, II, Division Three. He's been kept quiet in this one. I, I don't quite get the offensive philosophy. They, they set him up under center, and they just just try to run the football um, out of an eye, eye back uh, look. And it's done okay, but I think if you had a quarterback like this kid, you know, you're playing for a spot in the conference. You're two and zero. You got to beat Dartmouth to go to three and zero. Dartmouth dropped to one and two. So with Marks out now, Coach White and his staff, they got a lot of work to do here in the uh, second half. I think it's a huge advantage going into the second half for Bridgewater Random. They can throw it. We've seen that they can run it, but now with this. With Burns in the in the back there throwing it around, I mean it's it's gonna someone in the defensive backfield. I don't know if it's you know um, White that fills in for for Marks or another guy, but somebody in that defensive backfield has to step up and, and not let plays get by them, not let guys run by them because Burns is gonna find you and Burns is gonna pick you apart. So if you're Bridgewater in him, it's huge loss because now you can throw it and not worry that Marks is gonna pick you off or make a big hit or make a play on you. And same on the defensive side. Now you just cue on, on Kelly and, and tell your linebackers and, and ends, hey, just watch Kelly because he's not going to. Well, you, you would think that they're going to be able to stop the running game. That's going to put it on the arm of Will Kelly right. here in a second. We'll see how it all plays out. Dartmouth High will kick it away. We're tied at seven just underway here in the second half. And here's the return man coming to the near side. Indians chasing. They have him running sideways, and they have him bottled up, and they're going to bring him down. Running with the football was Alexander Mantelos for Bridgewater Raynham. The Jared, Jared Abreu, therefore, Dartmouth High School with the special team stop. Looking for Ethan Marks on the sideline. I saw him walking out slowly with the trainer. We yeah, don't see him here on the sideline. Dartmouth coaching staff said, without question, He's out for the remainder of the game. So it's going to be Chase Fenno, a sophomore, replacing Ethan Marks in defensive backfield. Tough spot for him. So here's Byrne. First possession of the second half, and they're going to hand it off and running it to the far sideline and picking up a first down was Dawson Dubose. There he is. You screen Dawson there. Picks up a first down. Welcome to the game, Chase Fenno. One play, one tackle. <laughs> Get your feet wet quick. Ricky White looking at his defensive secondary. He's way down the right side of his bench. First and 10, Bridgewater Raynham. They're going to keep it on the ground here. And they get himself another first down, a big gainer. And look out, this is Dubose. Still on his feet. Indians chasing. He's down inside the 20, inside the 15. Late flag comes in. Haven't seen much of this young fella running into in this game, but Dawson Dubose comes out running hard and is an Indian down back at the 35-yard line and a flag out as well. It's a nice weapon to have here. Dubose hasn't done much in the first half. He came out and he's got some speed and some wiggle to him. Well, that helps, so the block and the legal block in the back. But this kid could be dangerous for the second half. I don't know where he was the first half, but huge gain. Nice play by Bridgewater. Well, it's still a first down. It's a spot foul. So and there's still a Dammoth High School player down. So I know a couple games ago we had some issues with the refs, but there's these new federation rules that the MIA used football in. Most of us have watched football our entire lives, played football. To the normal person, these federation rules make zero sense to us. So 
you know, the coaches after the games are looking up what what the actual calls are because they don't know there's a hundred different rules. It, it's kind of crazy to me to to think of some of these play calls, spot fouls, and if you punt before the possession, there's a whole bunch of new rules and different things that this federation runs. It's kind of wacky, personally. And, and that happened in the Aponiquid game where it was a nine-minute stoppage in the game as the referees were trying to figure out the penalties, and there was many people here at the stadium that said, okay, someone make a call, and in the end, I think they get the call right. I think on that punt, there, there was a, a they, they foul committed, a uh, holding call, but I don't think the receiver had possessed the football yet. Is that right. Am I right? Yeah. So Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. So that I mean, most times you would say, oh, they'll dump they'll get the ball, and they'd take over on offense. And, but this was the new federation was, I guess, is if the ball has been possessed by the receiving team, and there's a penalty that's a spot foul. So that gives the offense who was going to punt automatic first down, which normally we don't see. If you watch NFL football, of course, we don't see that. So this is a little different. So. Cherry now coming along to the near side. And then the Indians physically struggling here tonight. They're still running back out for the rest of the game. And that young fella's had a pretty good ball game. And problem now for Dartmouth is I believe Charia was the replacement for Crane. Right. Was out. Now you have both linebackers out. Doc Noons is suiting up, Andrew. That's right. Well, he wants me to go in there, but... No, that didn't happen. No, that's not... I can't even make it to the refrigerator. First and 10, just inside the 40. And the Bose once again. He's got room. Flag is down. And DeBose has picked up a gain of 12 on a first down, but it's a flag back here at the 37-yard line, and the immediate response from the head official is that's a holding call against Bridgewater Raynham. Well, that's two good runs by DeBose, and unfortunately two penalties called while he's running. So the referee will start marching it backwards. And they're going to spot the football down at the 48-yard line. So it's be about first down, and we'll call it 18 yards to go for Bridgewater Raynham. But where did this DeBose kid come from? Here in the second half, <laughs> running hard, and as you said, a little wiggle to him. It's a nice weapon to have. You whip out in the second half, and there he is, DeBose. And the Indians had trouble with athleticism at Brockton. And here's DeBose again. And he's got room. Still on his feet inside the 30 and down at the Indian 28-yard line where he's picked himself up a first down and a gain of 19. DeBose hits the hole right there. Dutra got held inside. Couldn't get in outside. Nice cut. But this goes to what you were talking about for the casual fan. They don't know the two, two starting linebackers are out. And now DeBose comes in, he gets through the first wave, and you have inexperience at the linebacker spot. Now you have inex inexperience on the back end, too, with young Fenno in there, replacing a senior. So a lot of, uh, a lot of issues going on with the Indian defense in this one. And this time they hand it to Mike Rubo, who was a starter in the game and has started most of the season at the running back spot. Picks up a couple. So this is where Bridgewater to me is dangerous. Second and six, second and seven. They've had five straight runs. They got two replacement guys in there, a young cornerback in, in Fenno. I wouldn't be surprised to take a shot now. They've kind of lulled you to sleep. And this kid, Burns, can throw it. No problem. DeAndre and Brahini, top of your screen as wideouts. Here's a quick throw out to the far side. That's Brahini. And he's run across the boundary. Brian's pass is complete. Indian coaches were yelling sweep. We look on at the Indian sideline. No scoring thus far in the second half. Still tied at seven. Indians need this game. 
one and one on the season. Can't afford to drop down to one and two. Ranked 11th in Division Three football. And I think you have to be in the top eight, is that right? I believe it's top eight, yes. That's to get you into the big dance. And here's DeBose, and DeBose inches his way forward. Should be enough for a first yeah, down. going to mark it just short, but a yard short. Here's a Goodyear blimp ready to fly out of the stadium. The referees are looking, looking, and let's see. Bridgewater Arena player saying, come on. Here we go. Nope. Staff of Bridgewater Arena, all new across the way, as we've mentioned throughout the telecast. Dan Buron has left the program. I believe he was the athletic director, and I'm not sure he's still that either, if he's still working. I think he retired school. from both positions. So now we're going to have an official stoppage in play. 8.16 to go in the second quarter. Still tied at 17. And Bridgewater Raynham just holding the cards close to the vest. You would think with uh, Byrne, their outstanding quarterback, that per perhaps with the issues with the Indians defensively at linebacker and in the secondary, that perhaps it'd uh, take a shot downfield. So now they look at fourth down and short. Well, they're comfortable in the power eye, so I mean, you're not, nothing new to them if they're gonna get a short yardage. They have the athletes to do it. And the referee is looking to the far sideline, wants to make sure those sticks are set just the way he wants them. See the guy over there saying, okay, I'm just gonna put it down. I don't know what this guy wants. Let me just drop it. Come out in the wishbone. It looked like they moved early. No flag for us down pickup. That's the Bose. He's had a big third carry. quarter. Right down by Chase Fenno. Fenno on the tackle for the Indians. We'll look on. Let's see if he moved early. I didn't see any movement early. It'll be first oh, into his own man first Four down. Good play. I mean, that's, that's kind of their bread and butter up the middle. and Tough to defend that. First and 10, Bridgewater Raynham. And this time they hand it off to Alexander Mantelokes. Danny Martin in there for the Indians, along with Fenno Chase Fenno. This is what Bridgewater Raynham did on their last scoring drive. This is going to be their 10th play of the drive. Every time they've had a successful drive, it's the long, drawn out. Way you down, way you down. Ball Keeping the ball out of Dartmouth's hands. And they come out in the wishbone look once again. And here comes the flag. The running back was Rubo on that ball carrier. There is a penalty marker. TJ Pickering made the stop for to the Indians, and it's a penalty against Bridgewater Raynham. That's a couple holding penalties on this drive, Andrew. That is the third holding penalty of this drive. Hasn't stopped him yet. However, down in the red zone, it's a less wiggle room for DuBose to get to get his momentum going, but you do have Rubo who can just power you through. So, And you got Burns who can, who can throw it. So. Second down, 11 yards to go. They spot the football at the 15-yard line of the Indians. Second and 11. DeBose eludes the first tackler, still on his feet, and shoved out of bounds along the far sideline by the Indians' Esterlin. DuBose gets to the hole and he's quick. He, he gets to that outside very fast.
There's a look at uh, Esterlin, number 22. Third down, five yards to go. 6.27 to play in the third. Burns is going to turn and hand off, and India's defenders right there to make the stop. One of the first guys in there was Maddox Dupree. Parker Souza as well. Here's the power eye look here, live formation. Runs right into line. Good play by Chow. Well, Chow in there as well. Pickering as well. Good play by Dharma. This kid can kick it, though. Oh, we saw him uh, early on. Pre-game. Mason Berry. Ball is up. And the kick is good. Not an issue. We saw him pregame, Andrew, 40, 42 yards. Almost like a college kicker. And he's got his team on top by three with 5.46 to go. Bridgewater Raynham takes the lead at 10 to 7. Long, drawn out drive by Bridgewater Raynham. 13 plays ends with a field goal, 26 yard field goal. Now the pressure's on Dartmouth, what they can do without Marks. This is going to have to be the Will Kelly show and, and see what happens from here. You, you wonder if they come out and let him try to throw it a little bit. I, I don't know what the game plan is going to be for Dartmouth. Uh, it's without Crane, without Marks going forward. It, it's it's going to be a challenge. And there's the young Ethan Marks back on the sideline. Be sure that kid probably begging his way back on the field. The Indian trainers. They know what they're doing. Always have the health and safety of their of their student athletes first. And Marx is a return man as well. He's out on special teams. Well, Bridgewater Ram hasn't really kicked it deep, but they kicked him to more of the up man than the deep guy. And it's a shot, little pooch punt uh, oh. kick, and it's loose. And let's see who has it. Bridgewater Ram says they have it. The Indians say they have it. And I believe Dartmouth has recovered. Zachary Sylvia. He covered the ball for Dunmouth. Heads up play by him. So perhaps seeing on tape a weakness in the Indian special teams. If this is the plan, it's kind of a well-executed play. You've got guys going backwards, guys coming forward. Not sure who exactly missed that ball, but heads up play by Sylvia making a nice play. And if you're the return man, very simple thing. Fair catch. Right. And it was kind you, of you don't, you've got to catch it. You can't let the ball in to be recovered. It's called a fair catch. That takes all the defenders away from you. And here's Estelin running it hard. And he's up across the 35-yard line. Solid run of six by Estelin. His team now trails by three. Clock rolling here. Five minutes, 27 seconds to go in the third. Maybe Estelin's the guy who fills in for Marks and gets a... You know, and Mar Kelly and Estelin show now instead of Marks and, and Kelly. Let's see what happens. Here's Esterlin. He's got himself a first down. Breaks through the second wave of defenders and has a solid run of 12 on a first down. Brings the ball out to the 45-yard line of the Trojans. That's enough for a first down. Nice read option by Kelly. Gives to Esterlin. That's the, the end capture close on him. You can see how much they're keying on, on Kelly on that play. They just let Esterlin just take the ball and go right by him. I mean, both, both ends are right there for Kelly. It's going to be huge to watch going forward. First and 10 Indians. Good dose of Estel in here. Runs hard, gets it down to the 41 yard line. Where he was met by Michael Buron. Now Buron must be the son of the ex coach, I would guess. Could be the grandson. Could be, yes. <laughs> yeah. Good point. <laughs> Jeez, I keep forgetting I'm old. Second and six. Here's Chow looking for running room, still on his feet. Down, momentum down to about the 35 yard line. Ball came loose, but well after the whistle. Logan Johnson, Bridgewater Raynham, making the initial hit. That's enough for an Indian first down. They spotted at the 35 yard line, so. J.J. Estelin, the senior, filling in for Marks. Looking sharp here on this drive. The Indians looking to uh, 
scratch their way back in this one, trailing by three, and here's Estelant again. That offensive line, Andrew, up front, doing yeoman's work up there. This is what's nice about the Dharma team. They have so many seniors. You have Chow, you have Estelant, you have Kelly. One guy goes down, you have Estelant come in who knows. It's his first year here, but he's a senior. He's been around. He's an older guy on the team, ready to fill in. Second and five. Estelin alone running back. Here's Kelly. He's got time. Throws middle of the field. Open. Falls incomplete. Chow, the intended receiver. And that's a few times in this ball game. Indian receivers have been behind the secondary and just can't complete it. Yep. Let's say learned this play a couple weeks ago with Crane. It just slip out the the motion man and had him. He was behind the defender, just a little overshot. Oh. I think Kelly was under pressure on that pass. He was. He got hit just as he threw it. So. Tough kid, hung in there. Third and five for the Indians. Third and medium here for Dartmouth. Esterlin, that time tiptoed up to the line of scrimmage and was just taken down immediately. In there was Miles Beckett for Bridgewater Raynham, and now Coach White got a decision to make. Fourth down. We'll call it a long five. Kelly to the huddle. They'll go for it. Team trails by three. On this drive, it's been J.J. Esterlin. Now Kelly has no runners in the backfield. Esterlin near side slot now in motion. Kelly rolls right. He's got time. Plenty of time. And now he's going to be hit and dropped. And the Indians will have to Turn it over on downs. Just couldn't find anyone open. Evan Thrasher was there for Bridgewater Raynham. Kelly rolled out, waited, waited, waited. I thought he had Dutra early in this. In the flat, just couldn't, couldn't make the throw. And yeah, if you don't, uh, you got to throw that pass on time. But if your receiver isn't open, you got to eat the football. Right. But you don't turn it over. You just say, okay, we'll give it to them on downs. But no mistakes. Yeah, you don't want to do something silly and give him a chance to get a pick six or something like that or a fumble. So, so the defense of Bridgewater Raynham holds. And here they come again. They just scored three points on a probably about a seven-minute drive. And they get the football right back. And here's DeBose. DeBose has got room. DeBose is out for a gain of eight. They're having a hard time tackling this kid. Did he even play in the first half? I don't remember. I don't think it, he played much at all. So it's. And this Indian defense, as this game goes on, two minutes to go in the third. This keeps up. They're going to be extremely tired. And this is what happened in the Brockton game. They just were on the, on the field for too long. And uh, too many athletes for Brockton. Yeah, you got guys playing both ways. It's tough. And there's going to be... Uh, Parallel pass here, completed for a first down and more and down the sideline. And tripping up and still finally being taken down is the wide receiver on this side of the field, and that is Nolan DeAndre. Nice wide receiver screen. Good block there, gets Kelly outfield, takes him out of the play. Good stiff arm on Gomes. <laughs> it's a big boy running down the field there, so he's got the leverage of the height. And this is the problem with Bridgewater Rain. They can do that. They can run it up. They got Dubois. They got just weapons you got to just watch out for. And they only have the lead by three as we approach the one-minute mark. And there's a nice play there. Rubo, the ball carrier. Good fake by the quarterback. Good gain on first down. Yeah, nice counter play there. I mean, it's nice to have Dubois, and then you can run that counter with Rubio, get you Rubo, and get you six or seven yards with no problem. And you've got a good quarterback who knows the fakes, knows how to you know, trap the defenders with a, with a good fake. And Dartmouth trying to stay home, but just tough when they've got a quarterback who can make those fakes. Second and three. Burns been under center the whole ball game. And he hands it off to the first man through, and the Indians 
A right there, Devon Wilson, one of the guys to get him, along with T.J. Pickering. Third down and two, two down territory for sure, as the period now has come to an end. So we're through three complete here from the stadium. Our score, Bridgewater Raynham 10, Dartmouth High School 7. Not much action in the third team, just kind of going back and forth, back and forth. All of a sudden, they bring this kid to Bowes for Bridgewater Raynham. Got a lot of yardage in the Indians. This star player marks out. JJ comes in. He looks pretty good. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're Bridgewater Raynham, though, you control that whole third quarter. You had the ball for maybe eight minutes of that quarter. Dartmouth ran one, one series. They had eight plays. No, I did a turnover on downs, but I mean, if you're a bridge in, you're totally in control of this game right now. You're doing what you want to do. You know, you're in a position where you can take a shot out the end zone or just keep running it. So, I mean, if you're bridge in, you're in a good spot. Dartmouth, you're kind of hang, hanging on. You don't want to get down 10 because this team can control the ball, obviously, for five or six minutes at a whack. So, tough spot to be in if you're Dartmouth. Well, the kids here celebrating senior night here at the stadium. Varsity football players along with the the band and color guard, cheerleaders. Great performance at halftime by the Dartmouth High School marching band, led by their band director, John Doc Noons, unofficial title. Final 12 minutes coming your way, Dartmouth Community Media. I'm Jim Thompson alongside Andy Thompson. Doc Noons on the public address. Third short. Here for Bridgewater Raynham, two down territory. We start the third. And they give it to the big fella and he's out for a first down. That's Mike Rubo. Dan Martin on the stop. It is enough for the first. They'll possess the football and in scoring territory now. Inside the Indian 20-yard line. It's be interesting play call here for Bridgewater Raynham. Wouldn't be shocked if they took a shot here. Burns been quiet throwing the football, and he's got a cannon for an arm. He turns and pitches. This is DuBose, and DuBose is tackled in the open field. Solid play by Will Kelly. Nice play. How does tackle they make in, at any level of football? An open field tackle, one on one, DuBose. He's athletic. And so is this kid right here, Will Kelly. Two shifty good athletes going head to head right there. Good play by Will Kelly in the open field. No gain on the play. Second and 10 from the Indian 20. Play action to DeBose. Got him. Throws end zone wide open and over. Shoots the intended receiver who's standing all alone, Nathan Cafagna. He had him. Standing all alone back there in the end zone. That's a typical typical play for a team that just runs it down your throat. Nice play action pass. Had him from the jump. Look at him right young, down the yep. middle of the field. And that's who they go after, number 21, the young Fenno, who is the fill-in for Marks. Good play call, just overshot the ball a little bit too far there. Indians play short-handed on defense. Third and 11. Burn, throws, dropped. Dropped there at the 15-yard line. DuBose had it for a second. It'll be fourth down and 11 now. Perhaps the biggest play of the game, but they also have a real good field goal kicker. <laughs> I think we watched him kick this exact kick early before the We game. did. <laughs> Mason Berry. 20. Reminds you of a college kicker. There he is. 
right in your living room. From just inside, we'll call it 38 yards. Good snap, kick on its way. And the kick is... No good. No good. No good. Wide left. Just a hair left. That young fellow's got a leg, but... Just wide left. The Indians will take possession of the football now with 10.25 to go. You're watching Dartmouth High School Football Cablecast by Dartmouth Community Media. Peter Chase in charge of the entire operation. Glad to have him. Rick White, he's in charge of Dartmouth High School's football operation. Stellar career here at the high school. He's going to become a legendary coach by the time he's done, for sure. Here's Esterlin. Esterlin cracks it out to about the 24-yard line. He's taken down there. Solid gain. Esterlin's done a nice job. Four-yard gain. Brings up second down. Esterlin usually running the sweeps, but I, I, I like what I see out of him running up the inside the tackles here instead of on the sweeps. I mean, he's got the size. He's got the power to do it. It's a nice feeling for Marks when he's out. And they run it out to about the 30-yard line. That was the receiver, Baron Dutra, who, who cut it back inside, didn't pick up much. Bring up third down to long five. Kelly to the huddle. Estelin, the deep back. And then the Indians moved up front. And that'll back them up five instead of third and five, Andrew. They're going to look at third and ten. It's not what you need right now at this point in the game, obviously. But, you know, with Marks being out, it's moving Dutra, who's usually your starting wide receiver on the outside. Now he's got to play inside. You have a combination of guys between Adams and White um, playing, filling in at wide receiver, and you have Gomes. So there's different guys coming in different formations now, and it's just going to be a tough, a tough play to make in third and ten. It's really not Dartmouth's primetime spot to be in this well, offense. Well, we have a timeout with nine minutes to go, so we're going to crank up free pizza at Phase Pizza. Peter Chase, I know you're down there in the truck listening. Now, we try to give this to adults because the students get a lot of pizza during the week. So we like the, the parents, if we can get one of our camera guys. Like the guy to the right of me. Turn your camera the other way where the parents are. And then they can take the kid. There you go. Then they can take their family and get a couple of pizzas down at face. So we're going to let Peter move in here. I know we're not going to get a, a good front look at anybody, but there you go. That fella right there. There you go. If you watch this telecast and you walk in the phase and say, hey, Jimmy Thompson said I'm the fan of the game, I get a free pizza. And I'll even throw in a beer for you. Bring the rest of your family. Not a lot of friends. Evelyn will kill me down there at phase. Down there in Dartmouth Street, headquarters of Dartmouth High School football. After every game, you'll see a lot of fans down there at phase. Good job in the truck. Hope you enjoy your meal. Peter Chase is going to have to pay for a DC TV. He's got a lot of money. But he's spending it as fast as we make it. Here's third and ten. Kelly rolling, looking. He's going to throw it long, deep. He's got a man out there with his That's pass interference. For sure, Baron Dutra was interfered at the 48-yard line. And not intentionally. I think they got their legs tangled up. And there's that lonely flag laying on the artificial surface. Tough play on the defensive side, not to get your feet tripped up. We had guys going all the way across the field. There it is right there. It doesn't look intentional, but it did make an yes, impact. I think it's the right call. Well, it'll give the Indians a first down once they march this off. He's still walking. He's walking down the phase. 
So they'll march it out 15 yards on the pass interference call. 8.54, clock is stopped here at the stadium. Indians trailing by three. Indians catch a break there to keep possession of the football. Most importantly, Esterlin has got a little running room, cracks it up across the 35 and out to the 40 yard line where he's wrapped up there. Solid run, Andrew, six yards. Yeah, I mean, he, he's doing what he's supposed to do, filling in for somebody, you know, he's he's not dilly-dallying, he's getting to the hole, he's hitting it hard. I mean, that's that's how Marks gets his yards. So, I mean, if he's going to learn anything from Marks, playing with him in practice, hit the hole, your line your line clearly blocks for, for Marks, he's going to block, block for you. Kelly off the ball fake, throws far side, incomplete. Baron Dutra was the receiver out there. Will had to get rid of that real quick. Bridgewater Raynham's front has done a nice job on rushing uh, the Indian passer all night long. Yeah, they're very disciplined. Uh, I've been watching the Enzel out there. Very good at keying on Kelly and see if he's keeping it or not. I'm, I'm sure that was worked on all week long, just keying on Will Kelly. And, and he's got the ball, go get him. And I think both the ends have done extremely well tonight, not letting Kelly get to the outside and, and keying on if he's got the ball or not. Kelly's looking at third and five. And he's going to keep it. Looking for running room. He's not going to get it. Looked good from the very beginning, but Miles Beckett hit him head on. Stopped him from gaining more yards. And he'll bring up fourth down and a long three, perhaps four yards to go. And Coach White's going to talk to Kelly. Talk it over with his coaching staff and see what he wants to do. 7.52 on the stadium clock. I think you got to punt this away. I think he's going to use a timeout here. And he is. Timeout, Dartmouth. Timeout, Dartmouth. And I see one of the Indian coaches mouth the word punt. And... So you get the special teams, you get the offense, and now it looks like the offense is coming off the field and they're going to punt the football away. It's a tough spot in the field to go for. If you don't get it, you're giving this offense a short yardage. They can go in and score quickly, and then you're down 10. If you punt it away, anything can happen. Your defense is held pretty strong most of the game. Hold this Bridgewater team to 10 points in late to the fourth quarter. I think it's a smart thing to do at this point. Indians have one lonely timeout left with 7.41 to go. Sam Madden in there talking to the special teams. And again, this is where you miss marks. The last time they snapped the ball on a punt, once one hopper to the punter, got it off quickly. It's, it's not an easy job out there. To Baron Dutra, normally a whiteout and secondary player, is now in there going to snap the football. Actually, he's not. They got a new center in there. Freitas will kick it away. And it's a fake. And Bridgewater Raynham is going to try to defend it. Here's he gets it across the yard marker they needed. They picked it up. They picked up five got and it. a half. First down. Baron Dutra. So as you call it, new set. New Snapper there, up in Dutra. Very close play. Just barely gets enough for the first down. I know we've talked about it a lot this this game, but there'd be another time where uh, the old ball coach for Bridgewater would be halfway across the field screaming about that spot. <laughs> for sure. You know, you can't stand him when you coach against him, but when he's gone, you miss him. <laughs> he was entertaining. Esterlin, nice move, twisting and turning his way out to midfield. JJ's done a nice job. And we have an injured Bridgewater Raynham player who gets up slowly. Now works his way back to the huddle. Evan Thrasher. JJ does a nice job there. Keep his legs turning, spins, picks up about five on the play. And Thrasher decides to Take a seat, got up for a moment, and thought better of it as 
He's being attended to by both staffs, medical staffs. Red Sox playing tonight. You folks turning, tuning in live on YouTube. Doc Noon's going to get you a score. Then he's going to announce it to the crowd because they're all, they're all awaiting. One, one nothing Houston. We hear from the truck. Nice crowd out here, Andrew. It's nice to see. You know, I want to call it post-COVID. I know we're still in COVID. And everyone's taken. Uh, doing the right things. I think the positivity rate, I looked it up today, was 1.6 in the state of Massachusetts. I mean, that's about as good as you, you're going to get. People are doing what they feel best for their bodies and taking care of themselves. Those who get the vaccine, yes. Those who don't, I'm sure they're taking their precautions. But the one thing I've noticed, that people want to get out of the house. And you and I have done these games the last 10 years. Doc Noon's alongside here. The crowds haven't been good in the last decade. No. You know, there's too many things to do. People are on their phone. There's a lot to do. But post, I'll call it post-COVID, meaning you could go outside and, and, and go to games. Absolutely. It's nice to see. And I think these kids realize it, too. You know, they've been locked up in the house for so long. They, they missed a whole year of being able to watch their friends play and do other things. You know, I went to the Volk game at Volk. There was probably 200 Dartmouth students at that game. You know, cheering, doing their stuff. They had a megaphone. They had chants going. It's just nice to see. It's nice to, you know, the kids are respectful down there. They cheer for their friends. The, the parents here are all excited to see their kids play, their family, their friends. Last year, I think it was your mother and father can come to the game. That's it, if not watch it on DCTV. So it's, it's nice that people can get out here. And, and You're right, though. I, I don't remember the last time I've seen a Dartmouth home filled every row person to person. I mean, it's, it's nice to see and the, and the team appreciates it too, I think. Yeah. Well, I get uh, my booster shot today and I was told by the nurse at Walgreens that it's 57% of the people in Dimerth have two shots. What that means, I'll leave that up to you folks. Second, and five for the Indians. Second we'll call it a long All five, perhaps two. six. That's Estelin in motion. Kelly rolls that way. He's looking for running room. Trying to stretch him out. Oh, Kelly's yeah. got himself a first down and Tackled hard along the far sideline, but gets right up. And that was a good, solid tackle across the way. Aaron Perse making the play for Bridgewater Arena, but not before that young man picked up a first. Eshelin doesn't get the ball, but has a nice block there to spring him. Just enough room for Kelly to get the corner. Nice pickup of 12. And all you have to do if you're, if you're JJ is just get in the way. Yeah. You don't have to knock anyone over. You just impede the defender from getting your running back, or your quarterback in that case. And here's Esterlin now, and Esterlin running hard here in the second half. Getting applause from the coaches upstairs for his efforts. Piersayer made the tackle once again, but not before Esterlin picks up a gain of seven. Nice run by JJ. Hits the whole hard, just keeps his legs churning. He's a thick boy. I mean, it's not like he's a, a, a skinny little guy. I mean, he's just as big as as Marks. And if, if you're down with this, it's good to see that you have somebody that can replace Marks. And the Indians run it to the far side. Chugging, chugging is Will Chow. Chugging his way close to the first down he was looking for. It's going to come up a little short. And the third down and one facing the Indians. 547 to play in the ball game. They trail by three. It's like a long two. See the marker across the way. And Esterlin's going to be smacked in the backfield and hauled down for a loss. Mike Buron, therefore, Bridgewater Raynham, along with a couple of other fellas. Nice play by Bjorn, got the penetration yeah. down the line. Logan Johnson, 87 as well. You see him he's just a, getting up. He's a bit of force. Yeah, he's, he's been in the back for the lot. So the play of the uh, of the game and perhaps uh, in a conference game. There you see the yard mark is at the top of your screen. Fourth down Indians. Esselin in motion. Kelly looking. Kelly cuts it back upfield. He's going to be taken down. 
short of the first down. They only picked up a couple, and the Indians will, will turn it over. Tough play. Yeah, Bridgewater Raynard has been stingy on, on defense. That was a nice play by Miles Beckett. Yep, Miles Beckett's had a really nice game for Bridgewater as well. Bridgewater does a very good job of setting the edge and making Kelly turn back inside. All night long, they've done that wonderfully on defense. If you're a defensive point of Bridgewater, you're ecstatic with how your defense ends. That's Logan Johnson you're talking about, 87. And again, he's been all over the field. So that was a 13-play drive for Dartmouth, ending in a turnover on downs after a nice fake punt. So, In Bridgewater Raynham, the their last possession was about the same with no points. Correct. A, a field goal that missed. So this, this entire quarter has been taken up by long drives and no points. 10-7 Bridgewater Raynham. DuBose running against the young, inexperienced Dartmouth defense. Now a lot of injuries for the Indians racking up, taking its toll. And DuBose has come on strong in the second half. That's a gain of nine. This guy DuBose has come out in the second half and had quite a game. The Indian defense has to make a stop. Otherwise, Bridgewater Raynham will just run the clock out. Yeah, and they're capable of on the third quarter. They had the ball for seven, eight minutes out of a 12-minute quarter. So, I mean, they, they can possess the ball and, and control the line. And right now it's in their favor. And you can do that when you get second down and one. DuBose, he's got the first down, he's got more, he's out to midfield. Will Kelly making the stop. First down, Bridgewater Raynham. More importantly, they possess the football. Under four to play here from the stadium. Jim Thompson alongside Andrew Thompson. Peter Chase directing and producing with a veteran crew tonight, I notice, Andrew. A lot of veterans in that truck. Absolutely. Doing a great job. No one does it better locally than... Uh, Dartmouth Community Media TV, whatever we call ourselves, Peter. I keep seeing that DC TV little thing down the bottom there. I see that pop up every now and then. It confuses an old man like myself. Spread the Indians out to the near side. Two wideouts. And they're going to do what they do best. Just turn around and hand it off. And DuBose is out for another nine-yard game. Sky DuBose is probably averaging nine, eight yard, eight, nine yards a, a carry in the second half. The Dartmouth doesn't have an answer for him right now. So when you have second and short, and you got the lead, the Indians have one timeout. The clock's in your favor. You should just run this out. The Indians really, they can't stop them. They got to hope for a turnover at this point. Been a hard fought battle for sure. And Burns gonna take it, sneak it in there for the first down. More importantly, gonna get that clock rolling once that ball is spotted. And there goes that clock. The clock operator sitting right to the right of us. Pickering made the tackle, but Bridgewater Raynham in control here in the final two minutes and seven seconds. Yep, this is a display of time management for a high school team, if I've seen one. <laughs> They're doing exactly what you need to do. They don't make mistakes. They're very calm, cool, collective with Burns in the, under the center. DuBose and shoe top tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Nice defensive play there by the Indians, J.T. Charia. And that'll stop the clock. Indians use their last timeout with 1.40 to go. And I'm not so sure they can get the football back with a minute 40 to go. If they do, there's not going to be much time left, if any. New coaching staff across the way, Bridgewater Raynham. Dan Buron, as I said earlier, there, Colin Lynch. Just a spectacular career at Bridgewater Raynham. It's one of the biggest schools on, uh, in southeastern Massachusetts. It's rivals Brockton, Taunton, and the Indians 
under this format the last few years, for all you old folks like me, the Seekonks and the Somersets and the Bishop Stangs, are those Stangs on the schedule this year? Uh, the Wareham's, the Falmouth, and those teams are long gone. The Indians for the last 15 years, they're playing. They're playing with the big boys. There is, we're not a big school. We have a lot of retirees in this town, so we're not a growing, a massive growing area. We're not on 128 or Route 24. We're more of a suburban school, and the suburban schools around here, a don't want to play us. And the MIAA just, you know, Dartmouth for years was trying to get into a conference. And we always get stuck with this one with, with bigger teams, bigger schools. And uh, Dammoth, uh, for the most part, has held their own in all sports. Absolutely. Here's DuBose. He's looking for room. Just killing the clock. The more he stands up and jukes around, the more time he kills. You know, and I've worked in the Bridgewater Rainham area. I covered that area for my old employer. And I've gone to the Bridgewater Rainham school. And if you look at Dartmouth High School, it's a big school. It's a nice school. If you look at that school, it's a, it's a almost a campus. It's it's a huge high school. The facilities are huge, so it's not like you know. There's a major difference between schools when you go up to that place. And Brockton High School again. It, I mean, you won't go to Brockton. It looks like a junior college. Um, so I mean, it's good competition for Dartmouth. It's good that these kids play up. You know, they don't want cupcake games, but you know, it's a little unfair when it comes to you know, playoff positioning to play against some of these schools. And they're going to run it here, and they're going to run the game clock out. That's DuBose going down the sideline, down to the 10-yard line, and that'll do it with 44 ticks on the stadium clock. This guy DuBose has been a problem the whole second half. And you see the Dammoth High School students. This was a big game for the Indians. And they're going to drop to 1-2 and two in the conference. Five and two overall. Well, next week's a big week for Dartmouth. You have New Bedford, which is going to be on Saturday at 1 o'clock, I believe. Um, New Bedford's struggling this year, but it's not an easy victory if you look for Dartmouth. Now you got Crane in the knee brace down there. You got Marks holding his ribs. You got a couple of dinged up guys. I mean, it's at New Bedford. It's always a, a tough game. So we'll see what happens next week. But, you know, if you're Dartmouth, you got to get a win in the conference. Yeah, and all, all that being said, the kids that came in did a great job. I mean, you're going to lose the game 10-7 to 7 to a very, very good team that's now won three in a row. And we said at the top of the telecast, uh, they didn't have any cupcakes their first four. They started the season, Bridgewater Ram, against Duxbury, Zaverian, Bonstable, and St. John's Prep. You couldn't find a tougher schedule than that. So they start off 0-4. But they weren't cupcakes, and now they run their record in the conference to 3-0. and And Dartmouth drops to 1-2 and as both teams uh, get ready to shake hands at midfield. The Indians next week travel to New Bedford. 1 o'clock start down at Walsh Field. Andrew, uh, your final thoughts? I, I just think it was outgunned. I mean, uh, Dartmouth did everything they could do. Unfortunately, the injury with Marks. They couldn't get off the field. They had long drives for Bridgewater in the second half. They controlled the entire second half. That was a big difference. You know, eight, nine-minute drives, 10 to 13 play drives. They can kick a field goal. Dartmouth doesn't have the greatest field goal unit, but Bridgewater was able to get three points on the board, control the whole time in the second half. Dartmouth couldn't do much without marks, unfortunately. That's a big difference to me in the game. Dartmouth did everything they should have done to hold Bridgewater to 10 points. It's an unfortunate loss, but well, 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 well fought game for Dartmouth. Yeah, and uh, coming into the game, all we heard about was Declan Byrne, their quarterback. I think he only threw about four or five passes, and it was the running game uh, with Rubo in the first half. And then this youngster came off the uh, bench to Bowes, who just drove the Indians crazy, just uh, had an outstanding game. I don't have his total yardage, but I bet you he was close to 75, 80 yards here in the second half. So that'll do it here from Memorial Field. The Indians dropped to one and two in conference play. Five and two overall at New Bedford next week. I'm sure that game will be on YouTube Live. I know New Bedford uh, cable cast system will be doing that game as well. Well played high school football game. I would say I've seen a lot of them. Not a lot of great offense, but good line play. If I think if somebody told me what happened in this game, I'd say 
good offensive line play. Yeah. And defensive line play was okay because both teams just controlled the football on the ground. And I think the, the biggest difference in this game was Bridgewater Adams defensive ends and linebackers played a great game. They held Kelly in the pocket. They didn't let him get outside. They contained. They did what they were supposed to do. Well, well game plan, discipline, Bridgewater Adams team just took over and held Dartmouth to seven, which they don't usually score seven points. They score more than that per game. So well played game by Bridgewater. Well, that'll do it here from the stadium. I want to thank uh, all the fine folks at Dartmouth Community Media. Uh, TV, Peter Chase and the veteran crew we have tonight. As soon as I saw that crew in, I said this is going to be a great telecast. And you folks, you can look at college games. All these Division two and three schools have these games that they're televising. Nothing like we do here at Dartmouth uh, Community Media. Hats off to you guys, the entire staff over at uh, DC TV. The folks in Dartmouth can watch the game all week long on Channel 9. So that'll do it here. Final score for the final time. Bridgewater Raynham comes into town, walks away with a 10-7 victory over the Indians. For the, all the people at DCTV and my broadcast partner, Andy, Andrew Thompson, I'm Jim Thompson. Until next time, so long, everybody.